G'day Dave here and we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we've seen how Jesus is challenging what life in the kingdom will be like. Uh, he picks up on the laws from the Old Testament and the things that people have been teaching. Uh, for example, we've seen what he has to say about murder. And he's saying it's not simply pulling uh, the trigger and shooting somebody and killing them, but it's how you treat them in your heart, how you speak of them and so on. Uh, he's spoken of adultery. He's saying it's not simply whether you sleep with somebody who's not your husband or your wife, but whether you lust after somebody in your heart. And now he's going to push us to think a little bit harder about truth. And I think it's an important thing for us to be thinking about now because over recent decades with postmodernism, truth has been undermined. Uh, truth has been something that's seen as subjective and relative. You've got your truth. I've got my truth. Of course, when it comes to a discussion about whether that's a train coming down the track and whether it's safe to cross over the track or not, uh, relative truth, subjective truth kind of takes a back seat to whether that is a true train on a true track and whether you'll truly get killed or not. But that's for another day. Jesus is talking here about focusing on what is true, being men and women of the truth. I love that scene in the movie A Few Good Men. Uh, you've got, uh, who is it, Tom Cruise uh, playing this uh, young lawyer and he's badgering Jack Nicholson. Uh, he wants answers in the courtroom and he says, I want the truth. And Nicholson in his kind of uh, in incredible manner just looks at him and snarls, you can't handle the truth. And the reality is sometimes we can't. And so we are tempted to cover up and to exaggerate and to spin and to come up with alternatives. And Jesus is saying, no, don't pretend when it comes to the truth because you might make a promise with your hands behind your back, with your fingers crossed, but God sees what's going on. And you see, that's the nature of the problem with these oaths. It had, it had grown up in the set of Jewish laws, a whole heap of regulations that surrounded oaths. Uh, you could find them in this uh, law book called the Mishnah. And it spoke about certain oaths being binding and certain oaths not being binding. So if you were sneaky, you'd make an oath on the basis of something that wasn't binding. So, for example, you could say, I'm, I'm making an oath by Jerusalem. Or you could say, I'm making an oath toward Jerusalem. Now, to the uninitiated, that might not seem like anything different. But those two words, by Jerusalem or toward Jerusalem, ah, the devil is in the detail, you see, because if you say by Jerusalem, it's not binding. But if you say toward Jerusalem, then it is binding. And in chapter 23 of Matthew, we're going to see that this is a massive problem. They're making all kinds of oaths, and they're just being manipulative. They're being sneaky. They are setting up promises they know they can get there that they can get out of in the future because they can say, no, I had my fingers crossed when I was making that promise. That's the nature of what they're doing. And it's stupid, really. It's quite stupid to be loose with the truth, to try and pretend that we are somebody that we're not, uh, to give a false picture to others so that we look better because God knows what's going on. And I think that is Jesus' point here because he's saying, if you make... Uh, oaths about heaven well that's God's throne God knows about heaven if you make it about the earth well that's God's footstool God knows about earth uh, if, if you make it about Jerusalem well that's the city of God if you swear by your head well that's God who gives you hair and what color your hair might be and how much you have you see it's foolish to make oaths about anything because God can see right through what you're doing and of course, in the kingdom of heaven, it's about what God thinks, not what other people think. And so Jesus is pushing us towards truth uh, so that we might care about what God thinks, not what others think. That we might be men and women who are bound by our word, who tell the truth. And that is a problem for us. In fact, it's a massive problem when we see that Jesus is saying in the Sermon on the Mount, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. When it comes to our lips, we're not perfect. Our tongue is often forked. We don't tell the truth. We exaggerate. We cover up. We stretch details. We leave things out and so on so that we might be able to get away with what we want. And Jesus is saying, no, it's not to be like that in God's kingdom. You know, there's only one who is always keeping the truth. 
There is only one who tells no lies, who, who commits no sin, who never exaggerates, who doesn't spin doctor, who's not stretching the truth, in whom there's no deception and no finger crossing. And that is Jesus. And it's great news for us that Jesus is a man of truth. He is a sincere and perfect man because Jesus, who takes our lies and our deception, our exaggerations, our dishonesty, and dies upon the cross with them, does so for our sake so that we might be restored from the inside out, so that we can be cleansed. So you don't need to lie to make yourself look good. You only need to come to Jesus. And you can trust in God for yourself, for your future. You can leave everything in God's hands and know that in telling the truth, God has got this. It might seem a risky thing to come out and own up to what's going on. It might seem a dangerous step to actually fill in all of the details so that people see what you're truly like, but God already knows. You can't cover over when it comes to God. And so God is saying, don't try and cover over when it comes to others. Because life within the kingdom of heaven is to be life where there is honesty and sincerity, where there is truth and love. And friends, God knows what we need. And he wants us to trust him by being truthful. Will you do that?